Welcome to Know Thyself, a learning hub. Today we are going to discuss about verb, the superman of English grammar. What's a verb? A verb is a word or a combination of words that indicate action or a state of being or a condition. A verb is a part of a sentence that tells us what the subject performs. Verbs are the hearts of English language and English sentences. So here we understand what exactly is the importance of the verbs. So of course verbs are classified into many 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 types but here in this video we are going to discuss about dynamic and steady verbs. So let's dive in to the types of verbs. We have dynamic, static, transitive, intransitive, auxiliary, model, and then linking, followed by finite and non-finite. Out of all these types, still we have few more left like regular, irregular, and all. But this particular video is about dynamic and static. This static is also known as state of verbs. So what's a dynamic verb? A dynamic verb describes an action. Example, run, jump, work, play, eat or drink, etc. They are the most common type of verbs and can be used correctly in all verb tenses and aspects. Dynamic verbs are nothing but the regular actions that we do, just like riding, reading, running, jumping, working, playing, eating, drinking, whatever. All the physical actions which are done physically, which can be seen, which can be visualized, they fall under dynamic verbs. Now, what are stative? Here comes the stative verbs and the confusion. Now, a stative verb describes a condition. There are a few examples here. Know, believe, or understand, etc. These verbs can be used in simple and perfect tenses and aspects. However, they cannot be used in the continuous or progressive form. So this thing or this particular limitation or this particular rule it makes steady verb a bit complex it's just a bit complex but not entirely so here further we'll be looking at the list of dynamic and steady verbs on the whole we understand a dynamic verb can be used in any tense and any aspect comfortably, but steady verbs cannot be used in continuous or progressive forms. I could say most of the times we cannot use them. Now, let's take an example here. I know you. Here, we are using simple present but can we use progressive like sim present continuous can I say I am knowing you or I am believing you or I am understanding you no of course understanding can be used in a different aspect but here as the study meaning you cannot use it for, for progressive tenses or aspects going for it here we have simple continuous perfect and perfect continuous and we are using dynamic verbs so it's quite common let's see I run I ran I will run I am running, I was running, I will be running, 
I have run. I had run. I will have run. I have been running. I had been running. I will have been running. So these are general sentences we use while we read, write it. So dynamic verbs are not alien to us. We, we use them regularly. But here comes steady verbs. So we'll be discussing about the correct usage and incorrect usage. For example, in the simple tense of a stative verb, I could use I know, I knew, I will know. Or in the perfect aspect, I could say I have known, I had known, I will have known. But so there, there is a big red mark there. I cannot use I am knowing, I was knowing, I will be knowing. Or in the perfect continuous aspect, I have been knowing, I had been knowing, I will have been knowing. Here are a few sentences. The sentence, I don't know the answer. That's right. But can I say, I am not knowing the answer? No. She really likes you. Can I say, she's really liking you? A bit weird, right? He seems happy at the moment. He is seeming happy at the moment? No. Right. So now, here is the list as I have told earlier in the video. So basically, steady verbs often relate to thoughts and opinions, feelings, senses, emotions, position, measure, cost, etc. So we have a list of words like, dislike, love, hate, prefer, want, need, mind, care, know, think, understand, believe, guess, mean, suppose, doubt, realize, remember, forget, agree, feel, hear, see, smell, sound, taste, touch, look, belong, own, have, cost, measure, weigh, owe, seem, be, appear, consist. So all these verbs, the entire list can be stated. But, but English is a language worth a lot of expectation, exceptions. Okay. Now, do we have an exception here? Yes, of course. There are some verbs which can be stative at times and dynamic at times. So based on the context, we have the same verb as the stative and dynamic. Let's see how. For example, have. So if I use the verb have in the dynamic meaning, I could say I'm having lunch. So I'm eating. I'm eating. Right. So it's a physical action. So it falls under dynamic. But the position. I have an old car. It's under stative. Because position fall under stative. Think. I think pop music is terrible. Okay. That's not my statement, but that's just for a sentence. So, think here is under steady meaning. But what am I doing with my index finger on my chin and sitting on in a thinker's pose? Of course, I am thinking. So, of course, I am thinking about taking a nap. Here, thinking is a physical action. So, it falls under dynamic smell the fresh bread smells like heaven stative the police dog was smelling luggage when he suddenly started barking here the dog 
is smelling physically so this falls under dynamic same with look it looks like it might rain she is looking for her keys so here the first one is a condition the state of the weather at that particular moment in the second case that is she is looking so she is physically looking for her key in that particular bowl of keys same goes with way my laptop weighs about 2 kg so it's just the status state of that laptop because we fall under state of we saw the list already and that particular woman was weighing the ingredients for her cake so she is physically weighing of course we have to weigh things to get the right recipe and the right taste and not only this there are many to add the list now comes the super six of course the ipl season and ipl fever is running through everyone's veins so we have a super six quiz take a moment pause the video try to answer them see how many of you have got the right answers here are here is the key now please mention in the comments how many of you got all the six right in the first attempt and congratulations thank you so please like share and subscribe my channel hello guys welcome to my channel welcome to know thyself a learning hub today we are back with a video on articles articles is one of the main topic for all the job seekers students in all the competitive exams we get questions from articles so here i'm going to give you three simple tips in fact in this video i'm going to give you two simple tips where you can identify the articles what to use and we will learn how to understand use and identify articles so let's start what's an article see usually where is this article placed in a sentence it's always placed before a noun or a noun phrase now most of the times articles modify a noun or a noun phrase what do we call a word which modifies a noun we call it an adjective so basically an article is an adjective so like adjectives what do articles do articles modify nouns there are other things like determiners and all i'm not getting into that as of now what are articles they are adjectives so how many articles does english language have it has two articles one is definite the other is indefinite so of course in indefinite we use a uh, and an that's a different story they both are considered as one because a uh means one and means one we use the for the definite things specific things if we are speaking about a specific thing we use the if we are speaking about something in general we use a uh or an again where do we use them we use them before I mean, I'm mentioning a uh, and an or a uh, or an are used before singular countable nouns. A uh, or an are used before singular countable nouns. Then what about them? It can be used before singular or plural. But what is the main point to be caught while using the? The or the, however you pronounce it. It is used to refer specific or particular nouns. And a or an are used 
non-specific or non-particular nouns. For example, let's read the book. Let's read the book. Now, what did I mention? What did I say? So I'm meaning a specific book. That means me and the listener with whom I'm speaking, we both are referring to the same book. That means the book is already in the knowledge of my listener and me. But when I say, let's read a book here, even I'm not sure what I'm going to read, even the listener is not sure what, what he is going to read or what we are going to read. And we proceed. We proceed with a and an. So we always remember that using a or an depends on the sound, not the letter. From our childhood, you know, we were taught if you know if a word starts with a vowel before that we have to use an if a word starts with a consonant before before that we have to use a but not vowel letter not vowel not vowel letter and not consonant letter there are vowel sound and consonant sound so we have to go with the sound and here as i told you i'm going to give you a simple tip a simple tip to identify what to use a or an of course as we all know a uh, a which we use as article a we use it before the nouns or singular countable nouns which start with a consonant sound here a boy a car a bike a zoo so b k b z all of them are consonant sounds various and is used before singular countable nouns beginning with a vowel sound here we can see an elephant an egg an apple an ice cream so a a a i all of these are vowel sounds and as i mentioned i'm gonna reveal the trick the trick that i mentioned is here on the screen we can see devanagari lipi and telugu the sounds are a, a, e, e, u, u, a, a, i, o, o, amaha. Okay, amaha is not mentioned, but still. The trick is if you get a word and you are a fix, you are in a fix, whether to use a or an, just think of the word in your mother tongue, if it is Devanagri or uh, Telugu. If the first letters, first letter falls between a to aha, that is a vowel sound, we use an. ఏదిటీన్ here here are some examples university utensil european universe one rupee note one eyed man all these words are starting with a verbal letter but not a verbal sound so we have to use a uh, because when okay we'll check out the trick whether it works here university yeah would uh, would it fall between atwa no it falls in uh yara la va there so it's not a part of atwa group so no and only a same with utensil same with european same with one rupee note same with one eyed man but on the other hand if we see an honorable man an honest man an hour an yellow umbrella all these though they are starting with a consonant letter but they are giving out a vowel sound see h is silent h is being not voiced here so an honorable so it's a part of atwaha an honest it's a part of atwaha an hour and hello umbrella all these are starting with a vowel sound so we use and so there is a quiz try doing it and please mention how many of you got everything correct we can eliminate the doubt between a or an now coming to the one trick you have to remember or one rule one solid rule you have to remember is 
we have to use the definite article when you know exactly what you are talking about or when you expect the listener to recognize it that means as i gave in the example at the beginning of the video when me and the listener or the speaker and the listener share common language when both of them are on the same page and speaking about the same thing the exact thing the definite thing we use them see when i mention moon when i mention moon uh, with somebody here so am i mentioning about the moon which circles around the earth or am i mentioning about the phobos the moon of mars no right if i'm speaking to the martian then okay when i say the moon he might think of phobos and i might think about our moon but when i'm speaking to a man on our planet of course when i mention moon it means the moon one and only so me and the listener we both share the same thing right similarly when i mentioned uh, the prime minister when i'm speaking to a fellow indian when i mention a prime minister am i speaking about the prime minister of a neighboring country no right i speak about our prime minister so i mentioned the prime minister so when we share the common language or when the speaker and the listener know about the thing that they are speaking and they are speaking common about a particular thing about a definite thing or a specific thing we use them and of course uh, there are few things to remember as well but irrespective of these rules which i am going to tell you even if even if you follow this simple rule that if both the speaker and the listener have common knowledge about what they speak yeah we can use them but uh, what are those common things we can share one it's used before uh, the country oh, and here if the country is single we won't use it we won't use the or in fact any article but if it is a group if it's a group of states or islands yes the united states the netherlands the philippines and if i introduce a particular noun and if i repeat it in the same paragraph we use the or the so here we have an example i saw a movie last night the movie was entertaining a man ran into the street a car hit the man so in both examples we introduced about that now but when the same noun was repeated we used the definite article the because we are speaking about that particular noun which we have introduced already so i saw a movie last night so last night i went to a movie any movie but when i continue about it about which movie am i speaking i'm speaking about the same movie which i saw last night so the movie was entertaining and a man ran into the street of course uh, in the street there are many people but a man ran so out of many one ran and a car hit the man now about whom i'm speaking i'm speaking about the man who ran into the street not everyone ran into the street right one particular person went and he got hit by the car and before directions the south pole the north pole the east the west the south the northeast and names of oceans rivers seas deserts forests canals mountains mount in fact here most of us get confused if it is a single mountain we are not going to use the before it if it is a mountain range yes if it is a group of islands yes if it is about newspapers yes if it is if it is about musical instruments yes and about inventions yes so oh, before all yes like uh, the pacific ocean the mediterranean sea the ganga the suez canal the atlantic ocean the sahara desert the tabla the violin the piano and of course there are many like name of monuments memorials parks or national shrines see why why am i mentioning all this of course it's in grammar book and we are mentioning yes but if it is a monument if it is a memorial if it's a park or if it's a national shrine if it's so famous that means we share common knowledge about them see the mountain ranges as yes, of course everyone knows about it every country has famous rivers because all the civilization started on the banks of rivers so in this way we share common knowledge about that 
See, when I mention a uh, Pacific Ocean, is there any more Pacific Oceans on Earth? No, only one. So we share a common knowledge about it. And again, here, uh, monuments like uh, the Red Fort, uh, White House, the Parliament, these are always in the common knowledge of the people in that particular country. At least globally, that's okay, but at least in that particular country. So we can use. And then names of colleges, universities, or other schools, if the title of the school has off or fur in it. Usually, uh, we don't use uh, the before university names and school names, unless they are meant for a special purpose or they are meant, uh, meant for something. Okay, so what are the keywords to look into? If the name of the university or school has off or fur in it, or if it starts with uh, university or something, that's a different technique. But here, off or fur, please remember that. See, the University of Maryland, the Maryland School for the Deaf, the Model Secondary School for the Deaf. So here, we have this off or fur, and we are mentioning and we are specific about a particular thing here. So we are using the. Can I mention? Uh, the library. So we are in the same university. We have only one library there. You have the library, the dorm, the cafeteria, or the bookstore in that particular campus. But do not use a, an, or the if a building or campus is named after a person. Please do not use. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe my channel. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Know Thyself, a learning hub. Today, we are going to learn about how to use no article that in five minutes. As I have promised in my previous video that articles would be a, a series of three videos. The first part was given in the previous video and this is the second part where we will be dealing with using of no article which is one of the most complicated things. In the examination, let it be a competitive exam or any academic exam, we find it difficult to use no article because we'll be more confused. We have some clarity where to use a, an, or the, but when it comes to no article, yeah. So the entire concept, I'm gonna transform the knowledge, or I'm gonna let you know about this entire concept within these two sentences and within five minutes so stay tuned if you are coming to my channel for the first time please subscribe it so please like share and subscribe and without any further ado we will just get into the topic all right so how to learn using no article in five minutes yeah here we are Please remember these two sentences. You would understand the entire concept. Please, please rem remember or you know, please go with that bold words. You would understand the entire thing. Generally, we learn subjects, colorful abstract art and languages, play sports and games in schools colleges that's what we do in schools and colleges we learn subjects we learn different colored art we learn different languages we play sports and games and sentence number two people with disease go to hospital they should have proper meals now of course, that's again a general thing. People with disease go to hospital and they should have time to time meal. Yes, exactly. But now, we are no way concerned with the meanings of these two sentences. The only thing we need to be concerned is the words in the blog. So, the words in the bold. General. So, if something is told generally, we need not to use any article in front of it. And what is the next bold word? Subjects. So in front of the subjects like mathematics, economics, we cannot say a mathematics or an mathematics or right? uh, economics. Same with that. And third bold letter, 
colors so before colors we need not to use any article like we should not say a red color a black color nope and then abstract so abstract ideas abstract feelings which cannot be touched only which can be felt all the abstract nouns for that sake they fall under abstract so before that we should not use our an article and then languages hindi english telugu sanskrit all this before the names of the languages we should not use articles again there is a there is an exception here if we use the definite article the before languages most of the times it shows the nationality for example english is a language but if i add the so the english means the britishers who came right so that's an exception so please uh, be careful while using that and then sports and games basketball cricket and all school colleges hospital i mentioned here schools colleges hospitals universities temples all these are general places common places we go so i go to school i'm going to college i went to hospital next year i'm going to university right so here before them we need not to use and yeah there are some exceptional cases here if we are describing about it like uh, so and so like what of the school name is a school is a high school that's okay in that sense we use but please remember before that school name we are not using an article before the college name we are not using an article and before the hospital name we are not using an article and before the university name we are not using an article and there are some university names school names or educational institution names where we use the definite article the which i have told in my previous video i'll give it in the i card please watch that in special conditions we'll be using the before that uh, as i have mentioned like if the name has of or for in it so please do watch that video all right and then before the names of diseases except uh, flu uh, and this kind of things only there are two or three apart from that you know before cancer i cannot say uh, he is suffering from a cancer no he is suffering from cancer right and then me proper now what is proper so proper nouns before proper nouns we need not to use an at see uh, if i say ramu is a good boy that's okay but before ramu ramu is a proper noun there can i say a ramu is a good boy unless it is essential right so before proper nouns we want and meals before the meals we want use meal in the sense breakfast lunch dinner supper before the we don't and there is also an exception if we mention a particular food or particular meal at a particular place or time yes we use the definite article the for example the biryani that i ate in swagat grand is awesome or the biryani of babarchi is awesome so i am mentioning a particular dish a particular meal right so and this is for your understanding school college what do we learn subjects languages sports games hospital in hospital disease and proper meals so the first two we usually use no article to talk about things in general that's what the first bold letter means we see few examples example milk is good for you men are always fond of soccer uh, of course in our country we are fond of cricket that's okay so in general milk is good for you in general men are always fond of some game right so before milk and men 
See, I am using them in a very general sense. I need not to use any article there. So, if we are using anything in general sense, we need not to use any article there. And second, we do not use an article when talking about sports and games. That's what I mentioned in the board letters there. So, let's go and play basketball. Badminton is an indoor game. He loves to play table tennis. I should not say he loves to play a table tennis or a badminton. No. So, that is one more rule. Now, third rule. Do not use article before the names of countries unless the name suggests that the country is made up of smaller units or constituent parts. Yes, uh, this is what we have discussed in the previous video. Uh, if it's a group of islands or group of states, uh, we use the definite article the, like the United States of America, the United Kingdom, right? So here, apart from that condition, uh, before the names of countries, we not to use. And this rule again speaks about proper noun rule. Right, so all the names of the countries are proper nouns. So before pro proper nouns, we should not use an article. So before India, Japan, France, we need not to use. And then rule number four: Do not use article before the name of a language. Uh, we mentioned already. That is, uh, here we can see the example. We are learning English. So English is the language. Before that, I cannot use. If I use the definite article, it makes it the nationality uh, that also we have discussed earlier. Do not use article before the names of railway stations when they are also place names. If the uh, names of the railway stations are place names, again that falls under proper noun rule, so do not use. Do not use articles before the names of meals, this I have explained you. But see here the condition the the definite article the must be used when the meal is a particular one or of a special social occasion see here they invited some friends to dinner this is very general so before dinner which is a meal we are not using any article we had pani for dinner that's okay dinner it's in general but in this condition the wedding breakfast was held in a beautiful garden so we are not generally speaking about any breakfast we are speaking particularly about a breakfast which was held in a beautiful garden so this fall under the rule of specific which is the definite article so we have to use the definite article the before it so simple the wedding breakfast so i'm mentioning and i'm more specific about that and the last rule do not use article before noun joined with number for example gate 5 room 6 door 1 see before them we need not to use because we are already giving the order right a uh, or an gives count of 1 so we are already giving the order no need so you will be leaving from gate 5 we cannot say a gate 5 because of course there are 6 gates and then if, if, if I don't mention the number I can use you can leave from any gate or there is a gate through which you can leave those are different contexts but when I mentioned a particular gate so gate 5 so you are leaving from gate 5 and the laboratory is in room 6 okay so that's it I hope everyone understood this thank you for watching me my videos and thank you for supporting me so please like share and subscribe thank you and there is one more video coming in this series that is frequently asked questions in all the competitive exams stay tuned thank you see ya bye bye welcome guys to note thyself a learning hub we are back with a video on articles as promised this is the third and final video of this series and in this video we are gonna discuss some rules and some words in fact we should call those words as paper setters favorite words so without further further ado we get into the video 10 questions in the first part I like dash blue car more than dash red one so here 
I cannot say I like blue car more than red one. No. But according to the rules that we have discussed in omitting the articles before colors, we should not use an article. That's okay. But according to the rule of the definite article, we have to use the. Why? Because we are not mentioning any blue car, some random blue car. No. We are speaking about a particular specific blue car and the red card there so we are just comparing them so we are picking our favorite so it's specific so whenever something is specific the comes there so here both the blanks should be filled with the so i like the blue car more than the red one now where's dash money i lent you last week here again money is not some random see uh, money makes many things here before money i need not to use any article but in this particular example where is the money that i lent you last week so here we are specific about some money which was lent last week so before again specific things we use the do you still live in london before proper nouns we should not use an article so that rule comes here is your sister working in dash center of town and yes here we have to use the why because there are some words like starting or beginning, middle, center, ending or the end. First, last. So before these kind of words, we use the. Why? Because only one beginning, one middle, one ending. Or one start, one center and one last. Right. So before then, we use the. And Susan's father works as a dentist here i should not use the because he is not only the dentist there right he is a dentist out of many dentists he is one and after that after introducing him if i am speaking particularly about him yes then i should use the dentist but that's not the case here it's an introduction so i use a dentist oranges are 99 pence a kilo now a dozen, a kilo, these kind of measurements. When you get such kind of questions, blindly just put a. Right? That means here a kilo is per one kilo or per one dozen. So a here means per one. Okay. So before these kind of measurements, just use a. What do you usually have for dinner? And we have discussed before meals like breakfast, lunch, dinner, unless they are specific, we don't use any article. So here this dinner is not specific. We are not using any article. And then I have a terrible headache. It's terrible, unbearable. So one, one of its kind. We have a whole weekend free to explore the town. So we have this weekend. And then the car does 150 kilometers an hour. So this was also discussed here. H is not voiced. So before that vowel sound we use. And now let's get into the second part. So this is a bit tricky. Uh, in few competitive exams, they give like this. Why? Because uh, in the first sentence, something is introduced. There we use a or an, but the same thing would be repeated in the third or fourth sentence there we have to use the so these kind of things we just get uh, confused and complicated so let's do that also frank crawford is an american citizen american so it's starting with a uh. so remember the rule a to aha so watch the first video of articles wherein i mentioned the tip a to aha if the sound is a a e e u u a a i o o a maha if the word starting with any of these sounds before that we use and let it be an acronym let it be a word anything right he is also dash fbi agent just now i mentioned again a verbal sound when we are pronouncing it we are pronouncing it as f b i so f starting with a a a a sound right which is a vowel sound so before vowel sounds we have to use and 
and remember before these acronyms short forms uh, which start with a e f i l m n o r s x so if any acronym start with any of these letters and if those letters are pronounced individually yes we have to use and because if you observe all these letters they are starting with a verbal sound though the sound that letter utters is a consonant but when you pronounce that letter individually they are producing a vowel sound so before that we have to use article the same rule applies for the blank number 3 and has an id card same with blank number 4 whose qualifications include an m a and a phd now p p p sound is a consonant sound before that we use phd so a phd because his fa father was an mp same role in england so no article here because england proper noun and his mother an italian so e e sound is a vowel sound before that we use an franks often sees things from a european perspective yes now european though it starts with a vowel letter the sound that it is generating is yeah yeah is a consonant sound so before consonant sound we use a so from a european perspe perspective he was recently in london for a one day conference so one see o is being pronounced as v v so which is a consonant sound before that we use a where he gave a speech which lasted an hour so regarding this hour we just discussed and we have a bonus so which is as part three we have some bonus sentences so please remember them my father likes music very much here music is general so generally he likes music nothing specific so we are not using any article but my father loves the music of beatles now we have a specific music of beatles so here we use the see you on tuesday tuesday monday and unless you are mentioning that particular 13th the friday so in these conditions yes at that time we will be specific and we will be using the definite article the i always listen to the radio inventions max goes to work by train so here it's general don't be late for work general jake is playing the guitar so before musical instruments we use the but now observe this sentence playing guitar is his hobby now playing guitar in, in general so in general the entire hobby playing guitar is his hobby so here we need not to use any article he has never been to the alps now alps is a mountain range just like the himalayas so before the mountain ranges we use the and uh, the last sentence what about going to america in june so again june is not specific you're not specific right which june and all so here we are not using any article so i think uh, these three videos that i made as a series on articles have cleared your doubts and uh, you will be ready to attempt any question based on articles because in every competitive exam no matter if it's rrb banking or anything minimum of one maximum of three you get from article so if you watch these three videos i hope you can answer any question which comes from article thank you welcome to know thyself a learning hub we are back with a video on word stress which is most most requested video so here we are this is useful for inter second year, second year student as well as non native english speakers so here we go what is word stress see stress means the extra importance or breath force given to a particular syllable when compared to other syllables in the word we all know that words are made up of syllables so here we exclude monosyllabic words monosyllabic means which has only one syllable which cannot be divided into parts so syllable is a part so number of syllables in a word is nothing but into how many parts a word can be divided into 
based on the vowel sounds. In set one and in set two, we have some examples. Disyllabic words. Disyllabic means two syllable. Apple, action, Adam, center, cotton, sorry, business, paper, interest, knowledge, lawyer, novel, nature, author. So there is a vertical bar given before some letters, first letter. So apple, we have two syllables. The stress is on the first syllable. So most of the cases of disyllable words, we have stress on the first syllable, that the first letter. Here are some examples. So apple action, Adam center. Uh, we will look at the second example, second set of examples. Because around, prepare, before, begin, canteen, degree, forget, forgive, machine, adopt, July, success, garage, describe. The stress or uh, you can see the vertical bar is on the second syllable. So based on what rules we mark this stress mark, based on what rules we are going with all this. Okay. So English is a language which has many rules, many ex exceptions. But even with those exceptions, we can frame some rules. So we are going to discuss a few of them. And stay tuned to the video with a simple technique, with a single technique. We can identify the stress on 90 to 95 percentage of the words. Of course, 5 percentage, uh, you now there is a variation. So 90 to 95 percentage you can identify with a single trick which I'm gonna give at the end. So now we go with the rules. Rules of word stress. So <clears throat> as I mentioned, uh, it may seem word stress in English is unpredictable. We cannot predict. However, the following rules are available. So there are some rules which we can, so we'll go with it. Prefix is a letter or a combination of letters used before a word which altogether makes it a different word. Right. So here are some prefixes. So if any words starting with these suffixes a, b, d, r, con, they have stress on the second syllable. And this syllable is an entire uh, different topic. If you want, please mention in the comments. I will make a separate video on that. So alone, alone. So stress is on la, about, above, become, below, beneath, continue, resistant. So in all these examples, before the word, there are some letters which we call prefixes. And if the prefixes have this a, b, d, r, con, blindly we have to go with the stress on the second syllable so that would be the first letter of the second syllable so here alone a is the first syllable alone is second letter, second syllable so stress is on l about so b about become below bin name similarly uh, receive react retract all these things okay there are many more examples compound words now compound words are composed of two separate words. So in mostly these case, stress is on the first letter, first syllable. So toothpaste, football, postman, tea party, bookshop, grandmaster. So grand and master, book and shop, tea and party, post and man, food, ball, tooth and paste. See, these words are joined. Two separate words are joined to become one. So they are compound words. So toothpaste, here according to this rule, it should be on the first syllable. However, there is one more rule, like a few words, few compound words, they take stress on the second syllable also. Uh, for example, we can group them with ever, self, selves, 
right? See, for example, all selves, like himself, myself, herself, themselves, ourselves, all these things, they take stress on yes. Yes, right? The letter S. Myself. So stress is on S. Himself. Stress is on S, like that. And then same with ever, however, whatever, whenever, wherever, right? So however, whatever. Same with 10 meter, soft spoken, short sighted, old fashioned, themselves. They follow this rule. So here are two rules. One, if words are starting with prefixes a, b, d, r, con, stress is on the second syllable. And compound words, mostly the stress is on the first syllable. But there are few exceptions with suffixes like ever, self, selves. They take stress on the second syllable. All the teens, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, all these teens, they, they take stress on the second syllable, which is on T, the T in the teen, right? But if there are multiples of 10, like 20, 30, 40, 50, stress on the first syllable, right? See, 50, first, 30, 60, but 18, 15, 14. Previously, we have seen rules of prefixes which are added before the word now what are suffixes they are added after the word so this is very much important for example e e e e r e t t e q u e a i r e you know if words end with any of these suffixes mark stress on the last syllable for example employee so it's ending with e e addressee referee absentee attendee, examinee, devotee. So the stress is on the last syllable. Employee, addressee, referee, absentee, right? So engineer, profiteer, volunteer, auctioneer, gazette, cigarette, George, kitchen, same with unique, complete, critique, antique. Okay, same with I, millionaire, billionaire. So here you can add one more tip. Consonant this e e e e r e t t e q u e a i r e being added to that letter takes a stress. For example, e e is joined with y, so here stress is on y. With s, so again both s, so we take the first s. e e is joined with r, same r. e e joined with t, and then t, and then n. Same with e e r joined with n, e e r joined with t, e e r joined with t. E T T E join with Z, then R, then G, T. So you can you can take uh, that as a tip. One thing. So for example, these words which end with E E E R E T T E Q E E A I R E, they take stress on the last syllable. If you are confused about syllables, so to whatever the consonant sound they are added to, you can take it. So Q U E, you have to be very careful because. Uh, I sound would be added and then you have to go with say for example in case of unique so we are going with N not I because before Q N is the consonant sound in case of um, critique, antique, technique all these things it's okay but application application last second is K K examination so last second N, N, preparation, combination, so station, here we have only two syllables, stay and shun, so last second syllable is the first syllable of course, so we go with yes, same with here, potential, official, essential, social, financial, remedial, ick also, patriotic, so tick is last, so before O, we have this stress. Sympathetic. So th. Academic. D. Logic. So L. Historic. T. See here, all the geography, uh, they take a separate rule. Uh, you can use a tip. Um, we'll be placing stress on O. The first O of ology, first O of ography. So there, things should be clear. All the geography. We will place stress on, stress mark on O. But E and equal ET eyes. Here they take 
the stress on the third last syllable. So here the previous one is last second. Now this is last third. Here also musician. So yes, historical. So top, which is last third. Optical. We have only three syllables, and last third would be the first one. So we place stress on O. A B L E T. So T is the last one. L E is the last second. B is last third. So B. Next. Yes. Now is the time for the tip. So the tip is only two rules. Identify the long sound in the word, and the stress lies there. You now, what are the long sounds? Uh, e, U, A, O, O. Right. So here we will check whether it is applicable or not. So decoration, application, examination. Preparation, station, financial, remedial, social, historic, logic, right? So, same with all the geography. When you identify the long sound, the stress is there. So, in decoration, long sound is with R and stress is on R. Application, long sound is with C, K, so stress is on C. Same with examination, preparation, combination. So if you don't want to remember all these rules, just go with this. Identify the long sum, the stress is there. And the second. The second rule is wherever you are exerting more pressure from your mouth, there is a stress. Civilize, symbolize. See, I'm stressing more pressure. I'm, I'm exerting more pressure here. Sir, sir. Okay, and remember most of the words which start with N, M, P. Most of the words which starts with M, N, and P that take the stress on the first letter. Simple. Nature, mother, money, parent. Okay, pupil. So, just remember these rules. One is identify the long sound wherever the long sound is there that is your stress in telugu if i need to sum it up in two sentences deergal kosam chusukondi edeite deergam untundo academic stress untundi ekkadaithe otti palugutunaro academic stress untundi decoration ration deergam undi application k deergam undi historic ta deergam undi so it is simple with these two rules rendu adi గాలి ఎక్కడైతే వదులుతున్నారు ఇప్పుడు ప న మ ఇక్కడ యూజువలీ మనం ఎక్కువ ఫోర్స్ ఇది చేస్తున్నాం స ఓకే సో ఈ రెండే ఎక్కడైతే గాలి ఎక్కువ ఎంత చేస్తున్నామో రెండు దీర్ఘం ఎక్కడ ఉందో సో ఓన్లీ దీస్ టూ రూల్స్ విత్ దీస్ టూ రూల్స్ యూ క్యాన్ ఐడెంటిఫై నైంటీ టు నైంటీ ఫైవ్ పర్సెంటేజ్ దాట్స్ ఇట్ ఫర్ దిస్ విజియో థ్యాంక్ యూ ఫర్ వాచింగ్ అండ్ సపోర్టింగ్ మీ థ్యాంక్ యూ సో ప్లీజ్ లైక్ షేర్ అండ్ సబ్స్క్రైబ్ మై ఛానల్ థ్యాం